hello, hello! Welcome to the happy place! <laughs> it's where we harness the power of your happiness and use it to light up the entire world! That's so freaking beautiful! We knew from the very beginning, okay, that we wanted this place to be fun, and it was it was a blast to write this episode, especially with Gary's happy place. It was like, yeah. So I believe in the script there was a description of a waterfall, and my design sensibility goes uh, first of all to something very simple, something even the kids can draw, or just with one glance you can recognize what it is. Doing a lot of research and found out there was this. Uh, at least a plan for this airport with a uh, waterfall running right in the center of it. And when I saw that image, I thought, oh, that's our happy place. Ah, I forgot how much I love chopping wood. Papa, Papa! Gary, go. Become the hero you were born to be. But first, give me some smoochies. Oh, hell yeah, Cookie mm. Wife, get in here. Mm. Oh, put those chocolate chips in my mouth. Oh. Hell yeah. Immediately it was like, let's, uh, you know, what about frost bears? Let's put it in there, huh? How about Gary becomes a dance lord and he has to go up against a Spanish dance overlord? That's perfect, put it in there. You know, what about a, a hover DeLorean? That sounds perfect, we're gonna put that in there too. I mean, and then, you know, to top it off, what if he has a cookie family and makes out with his cookie wife? That sounds about reasonable with Gary's happy place, and it, it, it was just so fun. We just we just had a blast writing it, and um, that was the the goal is just to make the craziest thing we could come up with. What kind of frost bear would murder rainbow cookies in cold blood? So there were two dance sequences in episode two, and I wanted to make sure that each dance uh, set are, are unique in their own way. And the first one I designed, basically a single dance, and I immediately thought about uh, dirty dancing. And then the second one is more of a group battle, dance battle uh, originally. And, and so I imagined it to be more like uh, from Janet Jackson's uh, music video, Nasty. I was doing the research for Gary's um, costume and I came across uh, this image of John Bon Jovi from the 80s where he was sporting this tank top with uh, basically hot jeans pants and, and uh, I thought if I were Bon Jovi I would wear that and then I thought that Gary would do too and so I, I thought we got to do that and, um, and luckily everybody was in the sort of the same mentality and then, so that's what Gary wears in the show. <laughs> How did you get here? How the hell do I know? The last thing I knew I was saving the world and I've been making inspirational speeches to the youth camps ever since. Were they well received? Very. Well, one of the, the joys of uh, obviously writing this episode was bringing back Tribor. I mean, he, he is so fun to write and we had so much fun in season one writing this character that was essentially an idiot and then making him the head of the resistance. And it was just such a, a blast doing that, that we were like, we have to bring this character back. We're gonna learn so much about Tribor this season. And not only that, but we have really big plans for him. And he has a, is this amazing character arc and that we're gonna see towards the end of the, the, the season that uh, he's just kind of awesome. <laughs> you don't know me. I'm Todd H. Watson, and I know you. You see, you stole something from me when you lost the Earth! Well, one of the big obstacles for season two was coming up with some new villains. And I think for this episode, we really wanted to set up a new villain that was personal to Gary, you know? And I don't know if you've ever been in a, in a, in a relationship like this where somebody just makes you the enemy even though you did nothing wrong. And I think it was such an interesting dynamic seeing the events of episode 10 in season one, where Gary was trying to save the earth. He did everything in his power to save the earth. And it still wasn't enough for this bad guy, Todd Watson. Like he, he viewed it as he did everything wrong and I'm gonna blame him. And it really affects Gary, but it also, makes such a personal thing for this bad guy for season two. It's so ostensibly cute on the outside, 
and yet there's an edge to it. And as soon as you hear Alan Tudyk's voice, then just sort of like that edge just sort of like becomes fully manifest. So, so I think Olin said it best, which is that he can sort of go from this sort of like slightly kind of eccentric sounding character to someone who's like full on terrifying. And, um, you know, that's something that we've been trying to explore with Final Space, which is what are the, what are the boundaries of animation? Can you have a show that's legitimately a comedy and actually get terrifying? This doesn't end here. <laughs> Anytime, Clarence! <laughs>